Hi everybody, this is Bandor Tyrell, and I'm going to be building, uh, doing a demo of building some objects for Second Life and texturing them inside of Adobe Substance Painter. So I thought we could do a, a full project from start to finish and guide you through all of the different processes, showing you tips and tricks along the way, um, the way I do it. I'm no expert, I just, uh, I'm learning as I go, and I found that it's very helpful for me to explain to other people what I'm doing because it makes me understand it more. So that's part of why I do this. The other part is I, I, I just believe in sharing information and it shouldn't be hoarded. Um, I think Second Life is such an, a great platform and we need more people to be working in it, more people to producing things. So if I can help other people make really good stuff, then uh, I'm happy to do that. So we're going to take a build of a medieval tavern bar. So this is something that could be used in a roleplay sim or any kind of medieval, Gorian, Game of Thrones, whatever you want it to be. It might fit in that environment well. And I'm going to do a very simple one. I'm not going to do a lot of fancy extra things. It's, it's something that will be very practical and easy and, and hopefully fairly low on the land impact when you, when you bring it in. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I'm just going to jump right in um, and start. So here we are in Blender. This is Blender 3.2, I think. And we just started, so the default items are here, which we're going to get rid of. Now, I want to build a bar, and it's going to be an L-shaped bar. So one side's going to be short, the front face of the bar is going to be longer, and instead of a square corner, I want to have a nice big curved corner. So it's not just the end of the, the corner is slightly curved, no, I want the whole thing to be a really big sweeping curve all the way around, so that people that can actually sit on the curved part if they want to, or stand there. Um, so maybe you can't visualize that in your head, I hope you can, but you'll see it when, when we start doing it. Now there's multiple ways in which you could do this, and I've tried three different ways, and I had the most success with the way I'm going to show you. Now if you, if you know a better way of doing it, please feel free to let me know. But I started, I tried doing it uh, to get the curve is the kind of the starting point for this whole thing. So I used a circle, I cut it into four pieces to make a pie wedge, um, that didn't work really well. I tried taking a cube, beveling one of the sides to create uh, a curve, and then that didn't work really well. There, I ran into problems with both of them later on down the road, and the only solution was to start over. And so we don't want to do that. The best solution that I've found so far was to take a cylinder and then vertically cut it into a pie wedge quarter one quarter of the cylinder and then use that and that's what we're going to do so let's start with that we're going to drop in a cylinder shift a and pick mesh cylinder and i'm not going to really be precise on the sizing of this it doesn't really matter because we can change the size when we try to bring it into second life you want to try to keep things as small as possible and and minimize a lot of like extra faces and things which we shall talk about as we go through this where where to optimize um, but I did this and I brought it in and it was only a few li so let's see how how this one turns out when we're done okay so we're gonna start with this um, cylinder but one of the key things you have to do very very quickly when you first start when you drop that cylinder in is you have to open up this little panel down here in the bottom left corner um, and we're gonna change the number of vertices now I'm, I'm gonna use 40 as my vertices and there's reasons why I have to do with mathematics and uh, convenience so a combination of math and convenience gives me 40 sides on here. So I, trial and error, I, I played around with this. And what I'm going to do is, you'll see it as we go through it, but see how this cylinder has these vertical faces. And there's 40 of them. I'm going to turn those into vertical boards. And so... I want the distance, the width of the face to be the width of the board. So I don't want too many boards so they have really super skinny ones. I don't want really big fat ones either. So based on what I was playing with, um, 10 boards on a quarter seem to be the, about the right number. So 10 boards on a quarter is 40 for the whole thing. The other thing that's important is um, when you cut this thing up, you want to make sure that you cut it so that the faces here align with the compass points. And you'll notice the way, the way it's oriented right now, the, the origin and the 3D cursor are placed right here at the, at, the, at the origin point. And so this is 
centered on that. If you look at it right there, you can see it's centered there, right? So the Y line and the X line pass right through the middle of this, but you can see on the side, where do they pass? They pass on the edge. So if I were to cut it here and look at this, these edges are at an angle. They're not parallel to the Y or parallel to the X. They're at an angle. So that's going to, that's going to um, leave me with something that's not as appealing to the eye. So what I want to do is I want to rotate this so that one of these faces, either, either this face or this face, is parallel to the Y axis. And right now it's off by a little bit. Well, uh, I can tell you exactly how much it's off by, and it's mathematics. So there's 360 degrees in the entire circle. I have 40 faces. So you take 360 divided by 4. So that means the distance across one face is 9 degrees. So if I were to rotate this 9 degrees, what would happen is it would rotate to the point where the next edge, this edge over here, this edge would now be lined up on the, on the, uh, on the axis, the x-axis. So 9 is too much. I don't want it to be. I want this red line to be smack dab in the middle. So it's half of 9 is 4.5 degrees. So the way you do that is you go into object mode, you select it, and you're going to rotate by hitting R. You want to do it on the z-axis, which is the vertical line through it. And then we're going to say 4.5 degrees. Now the x line passes through the middle of that face. So that means that face is parallel to the y-axis. And if you look at the other side, on the y-axis, it's passing through the center of this face, which means this face is now parallel to the x-axis or perpendicular to the y-axis. And that's what I want, and that's perfect. So now let's look at the size of this thing. So in order for that to be the corner, I would need a fairly large bar. But that's OK. I can, as long as the bar is proportional, it's fine. We can scale it as much as we need to later. So let's just go with this. But what we're going to do is we're going to raise this up. I'm going to click 1 to go look at it from the side. And I want to raise this model up so that the bottom is on the, the this x-axis, which is going to be the floor. So we hit G to move it, Z for the z-axis for up and down, and then we're just going to move it up until it's just above the red line. Now it's sitting on our you know, virtual floor. All right, so I want to take this and I want to start getting rid of the unnecessary faces. Well, what are unnecessary faces? So the faces I want to keep are this one. Oops, I've got to go three for face. I want to keep this face all the way around to the next one that's parallel. So I want to keep those faces. I don't want to get rid of all the other faces. So I want to select my invert my selection and I'm going to hit delete faces. Now I'm left with just the ones I want. Okay? Now I'm going to create the side the long front of the bar and the side, the left side of the bar. This one's going to be oriented in an L that's what well, we'll call it the left side. Later on, I'll show you how to take this and make it into a one that's oriented the other way. And it's really easy to do. There's like one one button you click and it flips it. Well, it's not exactly that, but we'll we'll see it when we get there. Um, so the way I'm going to make these sides is I'm going to go into vertex mode. And let's go, there we go. Three, I click three for the side view. Now, I always like to turn the see-through mode on when I'm working with vertices because if there were multiple vertices, uh, it doesn't pick the distant one. It only picks the one that's closest to you that you can see. In this, there's it's only one vertices it's only one vertex thick anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm just, I just a habit. I like to do that so I, I don't forget. Now we're going to select with a box the two vertices on the end. Then we are going to extrude that by hitting E, and we're going to lock it into the Y axis, and we're going to drag that out to however long we think the bar needs to be for that height. To look about right, I think it needs to be somewhere in this neighborhood. Let's call it there. Uh, now if we go out and look at this, turn the see through off, you can see we now have, oh, I was on the wrong side. So we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a bar that is oriented to the right. Sorry. 
So three is looking at the inside of the bar. Okay, so now we're going to have a bar that's oriented this way. Or, or I can change it either way. I can shorten it. Let's just go with this. All right, now I'm going to come over here to one, go back in my edit mode, and we're going to select these two, and I'm going to extrude that and lock it in on the X. And I'm not going to go very far because it's just the side. Let's say maybe there. Now let's look at it and see if we think that looks good. Mm, I think this, let's make this a little bit longer. And we're going to move that. Now we're not going to extrude because I don't want to add. I don't want to add any more uh, edges. I don't want to add more geometry. I just want to extend this. So we're just going to use G to move it, and on the X axis, and we're going to pull it out, maybe to there. That's better. Okay. Now I have the front of my bar, or at least the beginning of the front of my bar. So I'm going to use this shape many, many, many times throughout this build. I don't want to have to keep reproducing it. So I'm going to save a copy of this. So we're going to take it, we're going to hit Shift D and X for the X axis, and I'm going to drag a copy off over there. So let's just call that one Master Front, Master Shape. Let's call it that. And then this one we'll call uh, Bar Bar Front. Okay. Um, so it doesn't really look like a bar yet because it, it has no thickness. It's only one vertex thick. So how can we make this um, thicker? I tried a bunch of different things. I tried cloning it and then connecting it. I tried a bunch. Nothing worked really well. Uh, and then I hit upon the easiest solution, which is a modifier called solidify. So if you go to the modifiers and you add a solidify modifier, now watch what happens as I drag the thickness over. The Right there, your geometry starts to break, so you don't want to go that far. But uh, you can actually make this pretty thick. So what I want to do is I want to make it the thickness of one board. So how thick do I want my boards, my planks to be? Let's say, let's call it about right there. So then just click, and now I have a solid wall with a corner that is rounded. So that's the first step in this video. I'm going to end here, and then we'll come back. What we're going to do is we're going to extend this, and uh, we'll put planks in it. We'll make it, turn it into actual boards, and then continue doing a bunch of stuff. So this is step one just got us the front of our bar. And that's going to be the end of that video. So I will see you back in a few minutes.